So I had some people asking me about some of the other projects they'd seen laying around in some of my videos. Uh, I put a few things together. Um, I've got a lot of things going right now, but I thought I'd talk about a couple different pieces because uh, some people showed some interest. Uh, so yeah, this like I said, there's probably another. This is about about 30% of the actual stuff I have laying around it in some phase of being finished and and everything. Some of them are custom orders, and others are just pieces that I. I make uh, on the side as well and stuff. So we'll start out um, uh, with what we've got here. Um, off to the lower left are the blades I talked about in my other video, the Venetus Sport Extra Blades. And then we also talked about um, this competition chopper. Uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, one I'm going to be probably competing with this year, probably be using at the, the uh, national championships and the world championships. Um, really. This is pretty thick stock. It's three eighths, and really able to distribute weight and everything. And I'm actually running quite a bit lighter blade than I usually run. Uh, last year, the World Championship blade um, is a, is a much lighter blade, but I've retired that blade, uh, be and and moved on to the Veneta Sport Extra and PD One is what I'm I'm competing with right now. So there's that guy. I mean, it's the uh, the blade sports spec, so it's going to have a ten inch blade and a five inch handle. We're going to do the Neoprene and Taro Tough composite handle. That's been a really, uh, really good handle for me. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, so uh, this piece here is, I've got a ruler here so you can see um, some reference and everything like that. So this is about an eight and a half inch buoy blade. Uh, this is a forged, a forged blade out of CPM 3V. And uh, one thing, some of the some of the things I do um, when I forge, I only forge for a couple of reasons. I don't usually uh, forge 3V for, it doesn't increase any performance characteristics, but it does um, allow me to use pieces that are in odd shape, and um, I can I can uh, curve them and shape them uh, to fit a, a design that I want and stuff. So this piece is heat treated. Um, everything but this sword right here is heat treated on the table. And we're going to use this uh, old piece, this old shed um, of a white-tailed deer antler. It's an old white chalky, um, very dense, very nice piece um, of antler. So we're going to put that on there. We're also going to make some fittings out of this this wrought iron here. Um, I'll have to forge some of that out and uh, make some fittings. It's um, hopefully we get enough to make fittings for both of these blades. So that's going to a customer as well that's got two of my pieces previously. Um, this piece people were asking about, and this is uh, uh, going to be a larger buoy. Uh, this is also forged 3V, and um, it uh, it's heat treated. And I actually just got this back recently. This is going to be a breakdown style. So we uh, I threaded the the tang before, and I'll make uh, uh, parts out of. Um, we're going to make a large breakdown D guard buoy. This is some wrought iron I got from from uh, somebody on blade forms and I'll forge this out uh, and make uh, wrought iron fittings uh, for it. Uh, still gotta get a little bit more information uh, about working this stuff. It's I mean should forge out just fine but the, the finish is always you know making it look like a frontier type finish. That's kind of the goal with these two uh, rustic type pieces. Um, this piece is for a really good friend of mine who now lives in Oklahoma and um, so this was a piece I had in my personal stash of a uh, of um, uh, pre-ban uh, walrus ivory and so I cut this handle off of that chunk um, and we're gonna put that together I think with the with the wrought iron and some forged copper fittings and everything that piece is gonna um, it's it's a sentimental piece for for my friend and uh, uh, he's we've we've uh, we've been good friends for a while and uh, um, haven't seen him so he's he's been wanting a, a a custom piece from me and so we're working that out. Um, up next, this is a design that I've been working on for the last few months and decided to finally make one. Um, it's a beast of a knife and. Uh, there's a lot of influence from different directions, but this one we call the Pillager. Um, the Pillager is a giant piece of 3V with all sorts of influence. I mean, there's some Japanese styling, there's some uh, Kukri type uh, shapes and everything. 
Um, but this piece is just, um, <laughs> it's going to be a very interesting piece. Uh, it's heat treated. i got to finish grinding it up and finish shaping it and everything. We're going to leave uh, the back ends and love this just the real rustic look. Um, we're going to take these knuckles and uh, we're going to, you know, grind them a little bit and, and uh, round these edges or, or, or basically make geometric changes. Um, just start off with some tarot tough scales on this thing and uh, go out and use it and see uh, see how it works. It's very forward heavy. It's quite a bit more forward heavy than um, anything else I make. Um, there's only one other piece that I'm working on currently. It's going to be uh, forward heavy like this. And I'd like, you know, I'm going to be testing out and see if um, that forward weight really, you know, has uh, what type of performance benefit I can get out of it uh, regarding, you know, that power, you know, the power exerted to, to swing this piece and control it is worth um, the amount of force that you can create. Um, so it's going to be a real interesting piece. So this is like 300 thousandths 3B. Um, it's heavily ground in the, these areas right here. Um, if I find that the weight is too unwieldy, I'm actually going to go back and maybe fuller these areas, uh, grind out on uh, some different fullers if I if I really need to change the weight and stuff. These guys, I've got about uh, probably about uh, eight different blanks for for these guys. Um, this one is in PD1 and these are in 3V and I just do these guys, these are little like sword tips um, they're kind of like basically um, you know tantos and everything but they're really thick with a lot of distal taper um, you can see right there we really distal taper it down this one's just got a um, like a shobu zakori uh, grind I'm uh, not like a hero zakori, this is more like a hero zakori this one's like a shinogi Shinogi Zukori, meaning it has that ridge line. It's got the Shinogi G and then the bevel. Um, and so these are going to be uh, put. Up, I, I kind of made them uh, real with the handles really versatile, so I can do a couple things. They can just be a full tang, and we can work that in, put scales on them, or um, I can work it down to a hidden tang, and then basically have the exposed lanyard hole at the end. So uh, make a core like a Terra Tough core, make a titanium guard on them. Just a lot of versatility with those. Those are uh, um, different pieces. Um, blades on these guys are going to run out to about about five inches uh, on the blade, and then a good size handle and stuff. Uh, this one in the PD1 um, gives me a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, uh, just a little bit more use of the PD1. I've been testing PD1 with blade sports as well. I've had a chopper made out of that since 2011, and it's been doing really well. Um, it, it was a uh, steel that I'd when it was difficult to get CPM3V, when Crucible was having their transition, um, I wanted to look into other steels just in case I didn't want to get caught off guard with uh, without having a steel that I'm totally confident. So that's when I really started exploring the PD-1 and the Benetis for extra, for um, replacements or if I need for 3V and stuff. So another project we got here, this was, um, this is a unique piece. Um, this is going to be a Kokatana. And uh, it is out of PD-1, um, and then I fullered it, or put a, put a bohi in it, um, and then we're cleaning that up and stuff. So this isn't heat treated yet. So this piece is, uh, you know, modern contemporary, but it's going to handle, I mean, it's going to handle really, really well. It's, it's balanced. Uh, it's got a great balance on it. The, um, instead of being the traditional, using like, I use like a titanium makugi, which is the pin, um, I'm gonna uh, do this as a breakdown. So this piece I've, I've uh, basically tapered down here and then threaded this end and then we're, you know, obviously all this is going to be radiused and then all the transitions here are radiused uh, and then the, even my, my plunges are radiused and, and so there's just no um, areas for stress risers when during heat treat or no fracture points. So this piece, uh, we're gonna go with this with the titanium suba. Um, this is the titanium suba that I've made up uh, for this piece. Um, it's going to get a bunch of different work and some chamfering highlights and everything and then we're going to probably, I don't know if we're going to heat anodize this or, or just regular anodize it. Um, the, it's going to have the Fuchi, Fuchi and Kashra. These are just rough 
Fuji Kashiro right now, but they um, have, um, they will be fit up, uh, and then it'll be this back piece. I made a barrel nut, oh, barrel nut out of 6.4 um, titanium as well, so drill and tap that sucker out. That tapping uh, this size of titanium by hand is um, challenging, and it's, yeah, um, and then that, that will um, basically screw onto here, we'll uh, taper this down to 3 8 then we'll pick the end cap will be recessed and drilled in the middle recessed and drilled in the middle right here so that'll um, basically compress that into the handle and everything will fit up against these shoulders and compress the, um, the handle core is going to be titanium and then we're going to do some other highlights um, I've got a got a theme that I'm thinking about for this piece that'll be pretty interesting. It's gonna look totally different than it looks right now. Um, so uh, we'll we'll put this finish off this with um, I'm thinking kind of like a skull crusher type piece, uh, um, either rounded or domed or or like a spade look or something like that. It'll be really interesting. Um, so those are. Um, different projects in the works uh, amongst many many others that are not on camera right now and uh, yeah so thanks for watching hopefully this answered some questions uh, a couple of people were asking questions about uh, different pieces they'd seen in other videos that were in the background or on the table or in that sense so um, thanks for watching